people bond with us over our imperfections more than they do with their perfections because intuition says no hide that stuff that's what disconnects us we need to push through that using the 3d process to say no i'm not going to do that anymore right i'm going to actually be me and connect and sometimes i will lose some people and sometimes and sometimes i'm going to gain some people because of it but mm-hmm. they'll be the right people welcome to be bold brand where we discuss the power of differentiating yourself through your own unique story and standout personal brand. Greetings, business stars. If you are a business owner or leader who's looking to create a stronger connection, more followers, and more confidence, well, you're in the right place today. And that's because we're talking with David Wood, a former consulting actuary to Fortune 100 companies. He's built the world's largest coaching business, becoming number one on Google for life coaching and coaching thousands of hours in 12 countries across the globe. He's also no stranger to overcoming challenges, and his mission is to help people like you become the badass leaders that people want to follow. We'd like to welcome David to Be Bold Branding. Welcome, David. So glad to be here, Tonya and Michael. And I love that we had a good laugh just before we hit record. It's put me in a really good state. I was doing my terrible uh, uh, Southern accent for you guys. And uh, I'm feeling connected and like, you know, all, like we're almost friends already. That's sure. right. <laughs> as soon as people hear Michael's Southern accent, they definitely want to try it. And right? you know, I, we, <laughs> hey, it's worth mentioning, uh, Tanya and I grew up about 45 minutes from each other, but never knew each other until about 10 years ago, mm-hmm. nine years ago. Uh, she went to Florida and then to Ohio and got rid of this accent that everybody says Not I have, all of it. but I don't think I have. So I no, don't he think doesn't I think he has an accent at all. No, I don't hear. Right. It. I understand. <laughs> well, I'm an Australian living living in America, and I could I can make it a bit stronger if I need to. Um, but yeah, people are often trying to do the Australian accent and butchering it. Um, oh, which, oh, which is fine. Terribly, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, Crocodile Dundee brought that you know forefront for all of us. You know, I he mean, did. And then we had oh, Steve yeah. Irwin. Yeah. You know, Steve Irwin. like yeah. like like. Um, you know, the mother's in the area and could kill me at any second. And I have the baby right here. Crikey's. <laughs> yeah, that did a lot for. Uh... It really did. <laughs> uh, it great. really did. Bravo. Yeah, broke my, I got to say it, it broke my oldest daughter's heart uh, when he passed. Like, so she got off the bus mm. and she, it was just all crocodile tears. Like, I'll never watch TV again. It yeah. was the saddest thing ever. That so. is sad. Hey, yeah. listen, David, let's talk about you all right let's talk about you um let's talk let's jump right into this and talk about the challenges that you have faced uh if there were specific events in your life i know we know of several of them that shaped who you are and shaped how you have developed in your life uh let's talk about some of those things well i i thought i had a normal childhood i just grew up as i grew up and then later looking back we can see that uh, I had a tragedy when I was seven years old. So my little sister was killed when I was seven and I was there, I, I witnessed it. And I just figured I grew up normally, but looking back and see what happened is I shut down the emotions. Now I was already Australian and a man. So my chances of actually knowing what's happening in my body were pretty slim to begin with. Then you add the trauma. It was, a, it was, um, emphasized. And so the silver lining is I got very good at left brain stuff, numbers, business, money, systems. I'm your guy. I got, I came top of my school and got paid to go to college. So I had a lot of privilege. And at the age of 26, I was in New York consulting to Ford and Sony and Exxon. And I, and I qualified as an actuary, which for anyone who's heard of it, it's not easy to do. So that was my life. And I thought I've got it made. And then I realized uh, that I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. I wasn't happy. And someone fortunately sent me to coaching and said, you, and this was back in 96. And then he said, you know, try this out. And so I went and I tried something new. And fortunately, my heart got cracked open. And I realized and discovered that I knew nothing about emotional intelligence. 
true vulnerability, authenticity, taking the risk to be you in any situation. I didn't know how to do that. I knew how to present a good front and it was working. Mm -hmm. Like, look what I had in my life, but I wasn't happy. So I embarked on a life of, in the last 25 years, have been about catching up, sitting with teachers, sitting with gurus, going to Germany and, and different places and doing things that would freak out any other human being to discover what it is to be human. So now I'm an unusual coach in that when people come to me, I say, look, if you just want more money, you should go to somebody else. <clears throat> but if you want more money and more happiness and to be you in the world, if you want to see what it's like to be 30% more courageous, 30% more self-expressed, a 30% more powerful leader, well, then let's talk. So I don't know if that answered your question, but that's what came up in response. Absolutely did answer the question. Yes, that's um, powerful. It's really powerful stuff. You know, in Brandface, we talk a lot about that when because it's personal branding, right? And we're going to talk about how your personal brand has led you to such great success. Uh, but it all does start with that authenticity. It does start with being your true self, uh, which is something that we think is this tantamount to success, period. Uh, and, and, and success being happiness, being a part of success, a huge part of success, because you can have money and be miserable. Uh, you can be happy and not have any money at all. And, yeah. Uh, if happiness isn't one of your goals, like if you're already super happy, great. But if you're not, and it's not one of your goals, maybe something's missing. Mm -hmm. Maybe time mm -hmm. for a little rethink, a reset of the goals. We, we often go on autopilot thinking, well, if I just, just keep making more money. Because particularly when I came out of, out of college, I'm like, all right, I need a job and I got to pay my expenses. And that's still there. So sure. we've got this driver and particularly for the masculine part of each one of us, that's like, I must provide, I must produce. And, I, you know, like I could die. It's primal. So we've all got that. But I think it's gone into overdrive for many of us. So when people come to me, I say, look, we'll do that. Let's double revenue. It'll make everything easier. What else do you want? And sometimes they don't know. And that's fine. I say, well, let's start there. Let's work out what would have you do the happy dance 12 months from now and have you want to call your friends to say, hey, check it. This is what I did. And if yep. you don't have anything on your list like that, we should talk. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. You know, I, you know, I say a lot because I've, I've, I've had same type of situations where you have success in business and you're surrounded by people that are very, 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 very successful. I, you know, I have had the luck of being around billionaires uh, and work with them, senior vice presidents of companies owned by people worth a billion dollars. And what I have found is that they have the exact same problems, just more zeros and commas. Um, they, there never is a amount of money to where you say, well, now I don't have to do anything ever again. Or, you know, you're the, all it does is bring more things you got to keep up with. Um, your happiness has to spring from something far beyond that. Um, you know, and that's, uh, you miss the goal if you don't look for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think a lot of your um, authenticity comes from having experienced something unique yourself. Um, and, and one of those things that, you know, I read in your, in your bio, David, is you fell, you, you had a, an accident I'm from a you paraglider. Cause I want to paraglide. So this, I got to hear right. this story too. T tell us a little bit about what happened and, and how you came back from that, because that's pretty catastrophic. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, there's the dramatic story that I walked away from. And then there's the less dramatic story where I actually broke my back. <laughs> but the, so the first one, I, my paraglider full collapse and I'm plummeting towards the earth. Now, if you're 3000 feet up, that's not a problem because you've got plenty of time to reinflate the wing or throw your reserve chute. When I tell experienced pilots, they, they say, how high were you? That's, the, that's all I care about. How high were you? 300 feet mm. above the earth. Their face changes because you, the chances are you're not going to live. You don't have time to reinflate the wing. I was able to reinflate the wing at 80 feet above the ocean and managed to get back to land. And so that one I walked away from. You think I might have given up then. But then in Colombia, I was flying and I was about to land back on top of a mountain. 
and I was a foot off the ground. Oh, damn it. One foot off the ground. And then a little bubble of air took me up and took me back into a place that wasn't good to be. And I had a partial collapse and I fell 10 or 15 feet onto my butt. Mm. If you can imagine, you know, 10 or 15 feet above the ground and you fall and land on your butt, that's not good for your spine. You're right. Um, the lesson out of all of this, I'm a risk assessor. That's what I do in life. I did it for companies and now I do it for people in their business and for their personal life. And I realized there's upside to flying and I'd rather get my kicks in other ways now. I'd rather keep my feet on the ground and take the risks that have a big payoff. There's not a huge payoff in jumping off a cliff. There is once to experience it and fly with a tandem instructor. Yeah, do that. But to fly as a solo pilot is so risky for the first 2000 hours. Mm -hmm. There are other things I can do. So some risks you can take that have a huge payoff are having that awkward conversation with your boss about the promotion. Telling someone, hey, that doesn't really work for me. Sharing a desire. And then we'll, we'll get to the book and, 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 and how this funnels into that. But sharing those things, it's counterintuitive because the brain goes, no, don't do it. It's going to be awkward. Or don't do it. It'll get worse. Right. No. I'm, confrontation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm here to say, let those thoughts come through. But if you're willing to push through that and actually artfully name what's happening for you, you can come into deeper connection with people and you can get your kicks from that. You don't have to go and do something that could kill you. There's no upside in driving without a seatbelt. Stop doing it. Right. <laughs> yes. There's no, you know, you feel a little bit more free. The downside is ridiculous. Stop ridiculous. doing it. Smoking cigarettes. You, you know better than I do that the, you know, the upside is, okay, might feel better in your body while you're smoking it. Downside, pretty high. Maybe you replace that drug with another one. Um, so people take terrible risks with no payoff. I'm here to say, stop doing that. If you're going to take a risk that can change your life, read my book, Mouse in the Room, and start being courageous in those areas, you will become the badass leader that people want to follow. They won't even know why. They'll just want to work with you. They'll want to hire you. They'll want to pay you. They'll want to be around you. That's a good segue now, Thanks, David, segue. Right, right into the book. Tell us what prompted you to write Mouse in the Room and what is it about? Let me tell you what it's about and then okay. why I wrote it. So Mouse in the Room, because the elephant isn't alone. That's, that's the title. And it's because, you know, you know about the elephant. You see the elephant. I see it. No one's saying anything. Right. That's weird. Stop doing that. If the meeting was supposed to end at one o'clock and now it's one twenty, and people like, you know, looking like they want to get out, there's an elephant in the room that we're late. And when's this going to end? Stop doing that. Address the elephant in the room. But I wrote this book because many creatures in the room are much more subtle. It's not an elephant if you don't know about it. Right. It's not an elephant if it's, if it's a thought that I'm having that hasn't been shared or a feeling an emotion, maybe I'm angry or betrayed or upset or whatever, or something's going on with my body. These are all mice. And if they're not named, they can become an infestation. So mouse in the room because the elephant isn't alone. And why I wrote it, there's the conscious reason I wrote it. And then what's probably subconscious. I think it'd be more fun to go to the subconscious. I think it's because I had a lifetime of squishing down emotions partly because of the tragedy I had and partly because of my culture and partly because in the world, most kids got in trouble if they were angry. They mm. got in trouble if they uh, were crying sometimes. And we, we haven't been trained in how to discover our mice, how to like know yourself and what's actually going on. And, and I've been fortunate enough to have coaches and teachers that constantly pushed me to go and have that conversation. And nine times out of 10, when I did, I felt better about myself. My confidence grew. My connection with the other person deepened and life and business got better. Mm -hmm. So when someone came into a class one day that I was teaching and said, you've just got to name the thing. 
you've got to name the thing. Just whatever's in the room, you've got to name the thing. We're like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> well, you, you, you know, but she was right. If there's something in the room or something in you that hasn't been named, the other person's probably going to pick up on it. And it's just weird. It's like, I'm an actor, you're an actor, we're presenting what we want the world to see. It, subconsciously, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This book is about taking off the mask to be more you in every relationship that matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that too. You were just talking yeah. about that the other day, Michael. He mm -hmm. said, I just need to be more who I really am. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of being very reserved, I need to speak out more on certain things that I feel very strongly about. We were literally just having this conversation. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I think we, I know, right. We all are the, the sum of the things that we've been through and the people that we've been surrounded with. And, uh, and, and, you know, I cannot say I had a terrible childhood by any means. I had some tragedy in my childhood. Um, I had a father that was, that had alcoholism and abuse problems and things like that. And what I found was, uh, especially because he was very, um, he could be very, um, uh, embarrassing in, in public situations, especially when he was drinking, that I never wanted to be the guy that was the embarrassing guy in the room, right? And so many times I know I need to say something like, well, you know what, that needs correcting. I need to speak up about that. But I don't do it because in a lot of ways, I'm just like, eh, what does it mean? What does it matter to me? Water off a duck's back. Let's go on. Uh, but I told Tony the other day is the, the more is re required of me as a leader in the companies that, that I help head, uh, the more that I need to speak up about things like that uh, it, when I see a problem and not not sweep that under the rug because I don't want to be you know, the embarrassing person my father was. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I think all of us have those mice in a room like that. Don't you think? Yeah. Well, what you say is sweep it under the rug. Yeah. Right. That's mm -hmm. that's what we're conditioned to do. And that's 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 a cancer in organizations and mm -hmm. in our soul. Yes. So wouldn't you want your team to artfully? I'm not just saying, you know, cause damage, but artfully name what's going on for them. If they're not happy with something in the company, wouldn't you want to know about it rather than have them quit? Yep. Have them read Mouse in the Room. Mm -hmm. Seriously, you read it first, then have them read it. This could, I can't even calculate what it could save you. Like the cost of losing someone who you've trained for years is astronomical. So I'd want to know what they're putting up with. If they have desires that they're not expressing because they don't feel safe enough, I want to know. Yes. I wouldn't, I may not say yes to everything, but I want people to feel like they can speak up. One thing this book will do is give them permission to do that. That's really good. Because, well, you know, in our, not to cut you off, but like in our situation, like our core uh, in both our organizations, my real estate brokerage, as well as Brandface, uh, the marketing company, at our core, uh, all of our executives and all of our lead teams they have that ability. We have those kind of relationships. They, it is completely open. It is white. Like, uh, but when you, as organizations grow, you have to add more people to to that, and then that's other personalities that spin differently, and then you have to figure out. And they need to know that they can trust that same situation uh, yeah. with the with the boundaries that come also with experience and those exactly. things. So it's uh, definitely going to be on my must read. And we're going to talk more for the the listeners. We're going to tell you how you can do that and participate in his book. Um, so we're definitely going to be reading it over here. Mm -hmm. I love hearing that. I'm getting so inspired in this conversation. I'm making notes left, right, and center. What I just got, got is that by default, there is no safe space to be ourselves. By default, because of our conditioning and training and other people's conditioning and training, if you just go and be you and don't be you artfully, then you could get in trouble mm -hmm. and you get people upset. So that's why we're acting. And that's that's fine. That's not a criticism on it. That's just a statement of how it is. Sure. Right. So there's no safe space. Mouse in the room shows you how, given that it's, it's not a default safe space, how you can make it a safe space to name your mice. In fact, there's a 3D process. I call it mouse naming and 3D in the book. 
The first step is discover your mice. The second D is for decide if this is a mouse worth naming. And the third step is disarm the, the other person so that they're in a good space to receive the mouse. Mm -hmm. And so you can create the safe space to name your mice. You can also create a safe space for others to name theirs. And mm -hmm. that is huge to I model this so that other people feel they have permission to speak up. Mm -hmm. And I love the juxtaposition of the elephant versus the mice, right? Because the elephant in the room is so big. Everybody knows it's there. Everybody knows what it is. No one wants to address it. The, the mice in the room are things that maybe they feel aren't worthy of addressing to other people sometimes. And I think that's a huge, Definitely huge part of it as well, big. because that makes you so very reserved to speak up. It's like, well, you know, it's not that big. It's not that big a deal, you know, right. and that allows you to do what you did when you were younger in, and just hold all those feelings and that expression inside. It, it's as natural as breathing. Oh, I can't say that, you know, it's not really worth it bringing it up. They're probably going to get offended. It's it, it, maybe it's going to be an argument. They don't want to hear that I feel betrayed. Mm -hmm. they, they don't want to hear that I'm, I'm upset with them being late. And so we squish it under and I feel sad in this moment about that. That was my life for 20 something years. And I'm still a student of this. Can I share even more? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I didn't expect to feel sad on this call, but that just, came up. So one re reason is, oh, it's not worth it. Another reason we may not share is, I don't want to feel uncomfortable. I don't want them to feel uncomfortable. Uh, the bully from 20 years, from, from high school that I, that I hated. Of course, I'm not going to call him. I'm not going to call the girl who broke up with me twice and gave me the cold shoulder, even mm -hmm. though I still resent it. Mm -hmm. You would be amazed at what's possible. Someone asked me on a podcast, how well do you have to know someone before you can name a mouse? And I said, let me rephrase that question. I think you're asking, how well do you need to know someone before you can tell the truth? Mm, very good. Very good. That's one of the saddest questions I've ever heard. Yeah, no, for sure. What, what world are we living in where you ha we have to even ask that? W what if you, with anybody at any level, could find a way to be expressed and to be you so you can be seen and known. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be a world? Oh, that's the world that's possible for mouse in the room. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And you know, I can't being a natural born salesman and a lifelong salesman, I would say that how powerful would this be? Um, if you're able to not only live this, but also to give this to your potential clients. Right. Uh, I mean, how many times do we miss the mark because we think they want something or need something uh, and, you know, they're not open enough to tell us what it is that they really want or need. And then we can't fulfill that need for them because nobody's on the same page. So I would oh. think that it's definitely powerful. Um, you know, I think of that Marianne Williamson quote, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, our greatest fear is how how great we actually can be. And exactly. instead of shrinking from that, we need to step to that so people will have liberty to do the same. Uh, and so I would think even in sales that that would be just astronomically oh. important uh, to get to. So you like real estate, you never know. Like you might think that you're hearing what this person is saying that they need in their real estate need. And you and yet they might not be totally honest with you. And therefore, you can't help them. Uh, and then you wonder why the deal went awry. And it's probably because uh, you couldn't disarm them and you were not right. disarmed yourself. I, I love this. So so I think the topic is because I get asked often by, by, I coach executives and managers and, and business owners. And they're like, how do I make it safe for people to speak up? Cause you know, they're not going to tell me a lot of stuff. How do I make it safe? Well, the simple version, have them read the book. Mm -hmm. Just have them read the book. So they're like, Hey, can I name a mouse with you? Boom. You know, no need for thousands and thousands of dollars in training um, to do this. You don't have to take 12 months to get there. Have them read the damn book. And you're right, clients. It's the icebreaker. It's the icebreaker. Yep, it's a great gift for clients. I hadn't thought about that. You get gift it to your clients and so that they feel they can name mice with you. Gift it to your staff 
so that your staff feel like they can name mice with you, your kids. You have a power hierarchy. You got a hierarchy with, you know, with parents and kids, hard for them to say some things. If, if they're at least say 12, I would say, you can give them this book. And if not, uh, if they're older than 12, definitely. And if they're younger than 12, you can share the concepts. There's a chapter on parenting. Share the concepts with them. So they're like, oh, I can say those things. Really? Okay. I can say, hey, can I name a mouse? I would love that. So yeah, if you want other people to speak up with you and you actually want more connection with them, this would be the shortcut. Now, you don't have to do this. You can just get the book yourself and you can model it and have a ripple effect. You right. can do that too. I'm just saying it's going to be 10 times easier to name your mice when other people are naming mice around you. And you're giving them, you're giving them permission by modeling it. You're giving them much more permission if they read it too and they're enrolled in the, in the concept. Absolutely. I was just rolling through all of our children and I, I don't think none of them have a problem naming their mouses to us. <laughs> that's the truth. Not Kids that's will often teach us. Kids will show us. Here's how to, that's here's true. how to do it. They, they may blurt it, it out. Of course, our that's youngest is 21, but you know, they, oh. they reach the age of where they're, you know, they don't mind at all saying, Hey, well, <laughs> that sounds, that sounds powerful. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it truly is. And it's, you know, it takes a while to get to that point with kids sometimes because we've, you know, we've had experiences throughout their lives that it wasn't always that way, of course, True. you know, now they're young adults. And so hope, thank goodness, you know, they feel that uh, comfortable in doing that. But even in, you know, brand faces, we're building these personal brands for people. Um, I'm, I have been consistently amazed at the things that people will tell us as they come through the program mm -hmm. and very proud of the things they would tell us. They open up their hearts because this is their story that we're crafting, right? And putting it out to the world. And it's just such a breath of fresh air to hear from them the things that have hurt them, the things that have shaped them, mm -hmm. the things that they want out of life and never have been able to achieve. And, uh, and it's, it much like in your coaching business, I'm sure you run into that a lot and it's fascinating. And one of the greatest rewards of doing what we do. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought it back to personal brand. Cause I, I want to tie in this concept of authenticity to branding you could have a part of your personal brand be authenticity and self-expression. Mm -hmm. You could be known for that. You could be known for sharing the things that most other people don't share. You can be known for naming the things that most people don't name. I've, you know, there's lots of things that I, I feel shame about and embarrassed about in my life. And by naming them, Sometimes publicly, it's helped heal those things. Absolutely. For, for example, for 20 something years, I've been struggling with depression and anxiety. It comes and goes and it depends. And sometimes, you know, and, and fatigue. I've had fatigue for 15 years. I'm thinking, how am I going to do this, all this launch and then go to acting class tonight until 11 p.m.? I don't know. These are some of the things I'm embarrassed about. And the more I can name those, Brene Brown said that shame is a public problem. It requires a public solution. Mm, I like and that. So, and so I think a part of my personal brand has been authenticity. People know that I'll say it. Now I'll lose some clients because of it. Some clients will be like, oh, he can't, he can't manage anxiety and depression after 20 something years. I'm not going to work with that dude. Fine. Mm. Other people will hear it and go, you're able to do all this in spite of that show me how to do it. Um, and I like to think that I'm giving people implicit permission to, sh to reveal themselves to the world as well and not have to just show the shiny parts. Yeah, I love that because, I do that, too. It, you know, it, again, back even I tied it into money uh, earlier, uh, but we're all human. I mean, they, like we all, I am the world's eternal optimist. I will find good in everything, but I know depression. I, I don't know it the way some of my family members have known it and battled with it. And some of my friends have had to battle with it. Uh, I've had other things I had to battle with that they didn't have to battle with, but we all are humans. We're made up of the same makeup. We, you know, our bodies work the exact same. Our brains work the same uh, in different 
you know, uh, um, amounts of each one of those emotions, but we all are the same. And I like what you're saying, uh, being authentic and, uh, and publicly sharing things like that uh, is not shameful. Um, and it's just really giving other people the opportunity to say, well, you know what, they, they shared that. I can share this. And, uh, and then you know, we see each other as the humans that we are and fallible and beautiful mm -hmm. and yes and let's be in let's be everything yeah yeah Let, people bond with us over our imperfections more than they do with their perfection so oh, sure. this this book is counterintuitive because intuition says no hide that stuff that's right. what disconnects us we need to push through that using the 3d process to say no i'm not going to do that anymore right i'm going to actually be me and connect and sometimes i will lose some people and sometimes, and sometimes I'm going to gain some people because of it, but mm -hmm. they'll be the right people. Yeah, that's exactly exactly, right. and the that's point. huge on our personal branding. That because we talk about that all the time. It was Tanya brought it to me when I hired her to help our company launch, and then it just worked so good uh, that we continue. She asked me to be a partner in the Brandface Company, and it was one of the greatest things ever. It is built upon the crux of that. People are going to do business with you when you are authentic. Your people are going to do business with you, and there are hordes of your people more than you could ever get to no not everybody's going to do business with you because other people do business better with other people okay that's fine no problem with that you're also not time wasting those people um so those are very big things yeah so, david we'd like to ask you five important questions about your personal brand all right we'd right like, we like to do this in like jay leno style we're going to count down from five to one but okay. these are five questions that we know are tantamount to a person's personal brand all right. Yeah. First, uh, no, number five, who do you serve? Like, I, I specifically, who are your ideal customers? Business owners, executives, and leaders who want to do better at their business or their work. And they're looking way bigger than that. They actually want to die with zero regrets and fully live their life. So, those are the people that I love working with. And they haven't already done 30 years of personal growth. I've done that. They've done some, and they'd like someone to help them with both the, uh, the business side and the life side. That's, that's the sweet spot for me. Perfect. Very All right. Good. Number four, exactly how do you serve them? By helping them realize that whatever they think is wrong is okay. So coming to peace with whatever it is, then we get into strategies. Mm -hmm. But firstly, like, you know, let's handle the energetics of it. Um, I help them love themselves more, really. And then to love their life. I don't sell it like that because that sounds weird, but that's at the core of it. Like your self-acceptance and, and appreciation. That's the answer I have right now. Love it. Great. Number three, what qualifies you to serve them? I've got, I've, I've done my time in the trenches. Enough said. That's a good answer. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> Number two, how does it make their life better? More peace and gratitude for what they already have. The joy of knowing that they're fully on track to creating what they want. So they're behind the wheel instead of being a passenger in life. And then deeper connection, deeper connection with people. I mean, if you make more money in the business, that's great. That's, that's, that's great. But if you're not sharing your appreciations, you're not being revealed, you're not being seen and known, you are missing out on the human experience. And so um, that's, I didn't even realize that, but that's one of my goals in my coaching. And it's definitely a goal with, mouse in the room love it all right and number one what sets you apart from others in your industry i think i'm more willing i'm more willing to tell the truth when it might cost me than most people i think that's one thing i'm also playful and deep there are a lot of playful people there are a lot of deep people um someone introduced me once to someone and said you should meet david he's playful and deep so um great compliment great compliment yeah i that, that on my tombstone would would be just fine playful and deep 
Yep. Love that. That's good. What is the one message you want to leave our listeners today when it comes to their personal brand? Practice discovering you. Practice knowing you. So you are clear. Oh, this is what's happening. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm... it's not always clear. Practice that and then use the tools in the book to decide if it's a mouse worth naming. And I'd say very often it is, even when your brain's like, no, I can't do that. And then bring a little courage to, uh, to, the, to the day and disarm the person to go and risk naming that mouse with someone. It'll change the world. You'll make some waves. The world could use some waves. Yep. Agree with that. So true. How can prospects reach you? If they have questions, they want to work with you. Definitely, if they want to buy the book. Thank you. Well, firstly, I want to say, if you guys are getting uh, value out of this episode and this podcast, go and leave Tanya and Michael a review because it makes a difference uh, to, to, to have more ratings on the podcast. So if you're getting value, that's a way to say thank you and, and acknowledge them. So I want to say that. And uh, for me, yeah, I have some desire mice. I love finding the right people to work with. So you're, if you're interested in coaching with me or training for your team, you can go to mouseintheroom.com and, and click on the links in the menu and get the book. Get Mouse in the Room. It's live. It's available. In fact, it's, it's, it's live today. And if you're hearing this today, there's a Kindle special. If you're hearing it June 13th, there's a Kindle special for 99 cents. And what I would love you to do, my design mouse, go and buy 15 Kindle copies at 99 cents. It'll cost you 15 bucks. And then if you, if that helps me make some noise about mouse naming and drive it to the bestseller list on Amazon. And also, if you love the book as I do, you'll now have 14 copies that you can gift to your friends, to your coworkers, to your family so that they can be mouse naming as well. And also at mouseintheroom.com, we'll have the, the Amazon link and we'll have the bonuses that we're providing uh, for helping us support the launch. If you're coming after June 13, still go and do all those things. You may not wanna buy 15 copies at the, at the regular price, or maybe you do. Maybe you wanna get a case, but you can still support the launch and mouse naming by getting multiple copies and then come back a couple of days after you get the book and leave a review. That makes a difference. People seeing, oh, wow, look at all the ratings on here. That helps make noise. I'm up for starting a mouse naming revolution. If you'd like to help me, that's how. I mouse naming mouse naming movement right i love it too love it. <laughs> i love it david thank you so much for being with us today we have learned so much about you your story how that impacts your business and how you help people so we truly appreciate you being with us my great pleasure this was a blast thank you both you bet. You bet. Okay, guys, if you are ready to take your personal brand to the next level, Michael and I want to help you just go to discussyourbrand.com. You'll fill out a short form. It's going to give us some more information about you. So we know a little about you coming into that call, your challenges, your needs, your goals, and we can help create a brand that teaches people how to treat you and helps you get rid of some of those mice in the room too, right? All you have to do is take that first step, discussyourbrand.com. Com. That's right, folks. Listen, we bring you value like this every week. Great guests, just like David, where you can learn things that are going to help you out. Uh, so subscribe. Be sure you hit that subscribe. Listen to what David said. Leave us a review if you like what you see in here. But be the first to find out about the new guests that we have coming out. We've got some great ones just like David. And listen, guys, listen. The reason we do this is all prosperity driven. But when we talk about prosperity, we're not just talking about money. We're talking truly about the 360 of an abundant life we truly wish for every one of you. We know here at Brand Face that prosperity favors the bold. So we say be bold, bold, folks, especially with your brand. Go check out mouseintheroom.com. Help David with his launch. It's uh, going to be June 13th. It's going to be a big one. We're going to help him out with it. And thank you all so much. Thank you, Miss Tanya. Thank, thank you, Mr. You. David. Thank you. All right, guys. We'll see you next time on Be Bold Branding. Brought to you by Brandface, the only comprehensive personal brand building system across the globe.